Welcome back. Uh, the second type of multiple point cutting tools that uh, we, we have are the ones that are used to make or modify a hole. And the most important of these uh, tools are the twist drills. So by far the most common cutting tools for hole making are twist drills. Most twist drills used in machine shop work today are made of uh, high speed steel. So as we discussed during our lecture on uh, cutting tool materials that HSS is a tough material. So for uh, long and thin cutting tools like uh, twist drills and reamers and tabs or the thin cutting tools like milling saws, we use HSS. But if the workpiece material is hard, uh, it is too hard to be machined using HSS, then we, we move toward uh, carbide materials. So uh, same is true for twist drills. So we may move to carbide drills if the, if the workpiece material is too hard to be drilled using HSS drills. A drill may be divided into three main parts. So there is a shank, body, and point. So you could see here. Uh, this shank could be straight or tapered. So straight shank drills are held in a drill chuck, while tapered shank drills fit into the internal taper of the drill press spindle. So you could see here that this shank could be straight or it could be tapered. Uh, the flutes are two or more helical grooves cut around the body of the drill. So you could see uh, the flutes here. So generally these drill bits have two flutes. The flutes have two main functions. So they admit cutting fluid and allow the chips to escape from the hole. Then we have the helix angle. So you could see the helix angle here. So angle that, that is measured with respect to the axis of the drill. So the angle of the flutes with the uh, axis of the drill is called the helix angle. Its typical value is around 30 degrees. So greater the helix angle, faster the cutting. So greater will be the material removal rate. So this angle is lower for soft materials and higher for harder materials. The web is the thickness of the drill between the flutes. So if you hold the drill bit in your hand so that uh, the tips of your fingers are actually holding the fluid. So, so whatever you have in your hands, actually, that is the thickness of the drill and that is called the web. So it forms the chisel edge of the cutting end, uh, of the cutting end. Uh, this one. So this is the web or thickness of the web. And it gradually increases in thickness toward the shank. So as we move toward the shank, the thickness of the web increases. And you could see actually one very important part of the twist drill that is the cutting edge. So there are two cutting edges in this case. So this one and this one, these are the uh, cutting edges. So you could see clearly here the cutting edge or it is also called the lip. So there are two lips or two cutting edges. And finally, we have the point angle. This angle is typically 118 uh, degrees vary, but for the commonly used drill bits, this is 118 degrees. So connected to the chisel edge, as we saw, are the two cutting edges. So this one and this one. So you could see one here and the other on the uh, other side of the, of the web. Uh, drills uh, can be actually modified to perform multiple functions simultaneously. So specially ground drills capable of drilling more than one diameter in one operation are available. So for example, in this case, we are making three different diameter uh, operations. So smaller dia, then larger and even larger dia. So toward the uh, point of the drill, the uh, dia will be small and it will increase as you move toward the a shank. So if we designate these diameters to be D1, D2, and D3, so we will have D1 somewhere over here, D2, and D3. And of course, we can, for example, drill and countersink simultaneously or drill and counterbore simultaneously. 
So this is a very good example actually to reduce uh, the change over time in drilling. So making one drill of different diameters or different shapes. Another very commonly used uh, tool uh, on a drilling machine is reamer. So these are cutting tools generally used in scandry operations to enlarge and size previously machined holes to accurate dimensions and high finish. So not only we achieve higher finish, but we, we slightly increase the diameter of the hole as well. They are designed to take small amounts of material out of a pre-drilled or pre-bored hole. They have uh, pit or helical fluids. So here you could see the fluids on a reamer. And similar to single point cutting tool, we are having a face of each of the uh, cutting edge. So there is a rake angle and there is a relief angle similar to end relief angle on a single point cutting tool. And there is a helix angle similar to a helix angle on a drill bit. We have countersinking tools. So if we drill a hole using a drilling operation and we want uh, the head of, the, of a screw uh, to fit into, for example, uh, into the part that we are making and that head is tapered, then we can use countersinking tools, something like this, so that the head of the screw, the tapered head of the screw can fit into the, uh, into the workpiece, or for example, into the body of the tooling that we are making. So this is the countersink angle. So countersinking tools with different angles are available. Uh, and there is a shank actually that fits into uh, into the spindle or whatever is the tool holding device that we are using. But if the head of the bolt or screw is not tapered, it is straight, then we can use counter boring, which is very similar to counter sinking, but we enlarge the hole, uh, not an at angle, but the enlargement is straight. So uh, this part actually of the tool enlarges the already drilled hole. So the purpose is the same, but depending upon the head of the bolt or screw, uh, we either use counter sinking or counter boring. So if the head is straight, we will use counter boring. If it is tapered, we will use counter sinking. But in both cases, we want the head of the screw or bolt to go into the workpiece or the body of the tooling. Finally, we have the tapping tools that are used to make internal threads into already drilled hole. Uh, in the workshop, you might have used uh, these taps with hand, but there are, uh, of course, drilling machines uh, on which you can use these tapping tools or there are special purpose uh, drill and tap machines where you can use these tapping tools to make internal threads. <laughs>